Hey family, how y'all doing? Welcome back. I am your girl Marshawn Olanio. I am your life and relationship strategist and today we were talking about the seven year itch myth. Or is it a myth? Or is it a rumor? Or is it your new reality? Which one is it for you? So I'm waiting for my other expert to come and join us on this Facebook Live and then we're going to go ahead and get started. But thank you so much for coming on here today and us just being here and us just enjoying one another and enjoying the time that we are spending together. So she's here now. So what I'm doing is I'm actually inviting her now and we will be side to side in a moment. It's adding her now. But again, this is the seven year itch. Is it a myth? Is it a rumor? Or is it your new reality? So we're just waiting for Kanye to be added uh, via Facebook. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. But some of you guys know that the one of the reasons why, what, what is it? Request got declined. Come on. Come on, Kanye. Okay. What's going on here, Facebook? Let us do it. Let us do it, y'all. Let us do it. Trying to figure out what's actually happening, y'all, for some reason. It's, uh... It's not acting right, y'all. So let's see what's actually happening because I am so excited and ready to get this talk started. This is a very juicy topic. It is one where it's never going to go away. And so <laughs> we are super excited about this topic. And let me just see here. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm trying to find her. I don't know why it's declining her. I don't know why it's declining you, Kanye. I don't know why. Okay, we are here together. <laughs> okay, hey. so, yes. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I was just telling everybody that this is the topic of the seven-year itch myth, or is it a myth? Or is it a rumor? Or is it their new reality? So I already did my introduction, Kanye. So you go ahead and do your introduction and we'll go ahead and get this thing started, everybody. So thanks so much again for coming out to watch and be a part. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, hello, everybody out there in Facebook land. This is Coach K here uh, with Love and Intimacy 101, your certified sexologist. Um, today's topic is just so important, so much of a, a big thing. I know it's on everybody's mind. Everybody gets worried about it. So I'm so glad that you invited me in to talk about it today. You're welcome. Um, um, the one thing I am very much excited about, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this out here up early and up front, is I hear that you are an international best-selling author. Now, I am. <laughs> tell me about that. <laughs> Okay, so um, I am an international best-selling author. The title of my book is Reignite Your Relationship by 7X, so you can get back to loving your partner and creating the love life that you want, that you need. Um, hello, author. We see you here. Um, and so, yes, it is all about how to reignite or create a, 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 a strong foundation between you and your spouse, between you and your partner. It's all about getting your relationship back on the right foot. Maybe for some reason your relationship got off on the wrong start, got off on the wrong foot, and now you're trying to figure out how to really be there with your spouse, how to really be there with your partner. And so my book, it, it, it um, actually talks about a lot of topics, but it's very easy to understand. It's very easy for you to digest the information. So I talk about some topics like respect your me time, um, discuss your relationship expectations, how you should spend quality time together, uh, again, making time to work on the relationship, how you should laugh together, show gratitude toward one another, getting rid of your fears and everything. So it's all about, again, creating that foundation so you can create the relationship that you want, that you need, that you desire. And the book is on Amazon. It is in paperback right now and, of course, an ebook as well. So go ahead to Amazon, 
Reignite Your Relationship by 7X by Marshawn Olanio. That is available for purchase right now. So thank you for asking awesome. me about the book. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I, that We all need to know because that's some good reading. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So what I'm doing now, because um, it looks like I'm a little bit preoccupied, but I'm just making sure I share this with as many people as I can to make okay. sure that everybody who I know wanted to be in this conversation can easily have access to this conversation. Perfect. So Perfect. I'm just doing a little bit of that. Um, so well, well, while I'm doing, doing that. that. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, while <laughs> Go you're ahead. doing that, can, can you tell us what made you become a um, sexuality coach or tell us the difference uh, about you, what you do in a um, sex therapist? So one thing that I've always enjoyed is everything about um, human sexuality and how broad and how vast it was. And I will say when I was in middle school, I had a teacher and this one teacher, uh, Miss Polk, she is amazing. She actually taught me. She actually, um, you know, taught me how to how to love me a little bit, a whole lot bit better than what it was. <laughs> but she was there for my middle school years. So mm -hmm. I went on to high school and I recognize and understand that I lost that at some point. Um, so then as I'm getting older and I'm having children, so I have five kids of my own, I realized that that's not even in school at all anymore. So for me to get into that realm and be able to educate and teach someone else, whether it's a young person, my age, older, whomever. Um, because one thing I will tell you is when I say that I'm a certified sexologist, that just throws people off. Like, oh my gosh, you're just going to talk about sex. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's so beyond that. So I love the educational piece that comes with it. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that was my main thing. And of course, you know, being a lifestyle brand consultant with uh, Bedroom Candy, that was the really, that's the starting point, but mm -hmm. <laughs> all that kind of ties mm -hmm. together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So I just, I want to make sure that the audience knows that you can take a part in this as well. If you do have any questions, make sure you put them down below. I will be reading them, whether it is for me or whether it is for Kanye. So definitely go ahead and put your questions down below so we can make sure that we answer your questions. So um, I actually have a question for you, Kanye. Yes. <laughs> Why do people shy away from sex with their partner? Let's just Ooh, jump right into it. Um, Why do they shy away yes. from sex with their partner? Let's jump into it. A lot of it has to do with the uncomfortableness that they feel for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes a person gets to a point where they really don't know their partner. You know, what could have started out as a completely physical relationship as you start going on, um, which kind of leads into the seven year itch as you start going on and you realize, you know, I really don't know this other person. Um, I barely know myself. So mm -hmm. now I don't know how I feel about doing different things. I don't know how I feel about you know, undressing in front of this other person. I don't know how I feel about them touching me because maybe mm -hmm. they touched you a different way when you were just in that physical phase. And now that you've grown up a little bit, you don't, it doesn't feel the same when you're touched. So mm -hmm. it, it comes really down to not understanding self and then truly not knowing that other person on a mental level before you get to a physical level. Okay. Could, could some of that come from um, sexual trauma as well? It absolutely can come from some sexual trauma. And that is where that internalized, um, because, you know, depending on when that sexual trauma happens, you may never have known who you were to begin with. You know, if something, say you were precious three to five years old and something was just taken from you. So you've lived your entire life guarded, never letting anyone in, never accepting genuine love, never accepting truly yourself, or you become this persona um, as you're growing up, because in your mind, no one's ever going to hurt you again. So you become this person that is a shell of you. And mm -hmm. so 
you never really learned who you were because something was taken so early and you meant you were going to protect yourself moving forward. So definitely um, different traumas have a lot to do with that for sure. Okay. 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 So let me ask you something. Okay. Well, let's do it. <laughs> um, how, do you, how do you deal with or how would you instruct someone on how to deal with differences in the bedroom? Oh, in the, in the bedroom. Um, you know what? It's, it really is all about communication. Just opening up and saying what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, what you like, what you don't like. And as you mentioned, if they don't know these things, then this is where the exploration comes in. On top of that, a lot of people get stuck up here. You get stuck up here mm. and thinking about, are you going to be judged? What are they going to say? Um, should I move? Should I not move? Uh, uh, should I scream? Should I not scream? A am I doing mm -hmm. it right? Am I not doing it right? So we have all of this stuff going on in our heads. And so a way to alleviate a lot of this stuff is to have these tough, because I always talk about the tough conversations. You guys know this. So have the tough conversations before you get in that situation. So by the time you make it to the bedroom, you're like, okay, so you're able to demonstrate put your partner's hand here to say, you know what, continue to do this. I like this, but it really is mm. all about communication. Just letting your partner know what you like, what you don't like. You know what? I actually tried that out. I won't be doing that again, but be open to the idea of actually trying it out. Be open to the idea of saying, you know what? Okay. This is not something that I'm truly comfortable doing, mm -hmm. but still try it out especially if you guys are married because while you're married, your bedroom is undefiled. You can pretty much try anything in your bedroom because it's your bedroom. Y'all went before God and said your vows and everything, right? So right. you have to be ready and open to explore what your partner likes before you say no, before you say, I don't like that at least make sure that you are trying it out to say, I don't like that, or no, we're not going to try that again. Okay? Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. Um, and what about that, those two people that just, they can't put that communication together? How do you get them to that point of better communication? Well, really, it's all, okay, so, so one of the things that I actually have my clients do all the time is, if you guys find yourself not being able to have a healthy communication, take some time to actually write down your questions without interruption, write them down. And that way you, when you guys come together, you can have an open conversation about what you truly want to talk about instead of not when, by the time you get there, you're not able to articulate yourself or maybe you forgot mm -hmm. said question. Take some time to go away from your spouse in a quiet area and write down the things that you really need answers to, or, you know what, I'm not really, um, I'm not really happy about trying this, but because you're my husband, because you're my spouse, I'm going to try it with you, but I, it has to be the option where I can opt out of it, where we not, never try it again, because I'm super uncomfortable with that or have some type of a um, safety word or something where you can say, mm -hmm enough is enough. I've tried it. I've done that. I don't necessarily want to keep going with this one. Yeah, I think that um, being able to to give your do's and don'ts yes. is a very important piece. And I think that sometimes get lost. And it's something that you brought up a little bit earlier, you know, um, when it comes to that marriage, I feel like sometimes one or the other person kind of loses themselves. And so they forget that I can say no. Um, I can I can try things. I give myself permission to be exploratory with my partner, or I give myself permission to tell my partner, "Hey, slow down, speed up, move to the right, move to the left." So um, that is a, a a big thing with remembering to give yourself that permission to to open up the communication, perfect, and perfect. whether it be positive or negative in that moment. Yes. Okay, so Taiwanda has a question. She said, why is it called the seven-year itch? Can you, can you take that and answer that, Kanye? 
<laughs> yes. So this is a myth that, uh, excuse me, is it a myth? I don't know. But this is something that uh, <laughs> was created eons ago. And it was under the premise that um, someone around that seven year mark would want something different for themselves in life mm -hmm. or around that mark in a marriage would start to um, have infidelity issues. Mm -hmm. So it's in where I believe it came from is, um, again, it's people not knowing their partner. You know, from, you know, the golden days, there were arranged marriages. There were marriages that people were just put together because of whatever history, whatever, whatever reasons, people were just placed together. There were young girls that were groomed and they knew at an early age, and it's still happening today, that you're going to marry this person in this family when you're 15 or 16 or whatever the age is. As soon as you do that, you're going to get married. You don't know this person. You didn't want to get to know them because maybe you felt defiant as a teenager. You want to do what you want to do. So around that seven year mark, it's like, okay, you've grown a little bit. You've matured plenty in, in your mind. So who you met seven years ago um, and who you were seven years ago may not be the person you want to be with now or for yourself who you want to be now. So that's where that began. Okay. Okay. So I wonder if you're Did still you have a different take? Well. No, actually, um, I don't have a, a different take on it. I um, have to say that some of you know, but some of you don't. So I'm going to repeat a little bit of story that I usually tell, which is this is my second marriage. And I'm telling that story because I got a divorce during my seventh year. <laughs> and things were just not going right. It wasn't going right. Uh, there was a lot of things that we needed to work on, a lot of things that we need to get together. And when you are the only party who is ready to make that change, when you're the only party who's actually actively working on the relationship to make it better, the relationship cannot work. Mm -hmm. So I was the one who was actively trying to make things work. But then also... One day, he just came to me and said that he wanted a divorce. That was why I got a divorce, because he said that he wanted a divorce. But it really did happen around that seven-year mark. Mm -hmm. And maybe he got the itch. I can't speak for him. I don't want to speak for him. But what I right. will say is that there is something to the seven-year itch, because it totally happened to me. It's happened to several clients, friends, you know, family members. It's happened a lot where somewhere in between seven and 10 years, you're thinking, should I stay? Should I go? Is this right? Am I sick and tired of going through the ebbs and flows? Am I sick and tired of compromising? Um, there's a lot that goes into it, but a lot of it does have to go with um, what Tanya was speaking about, which is mm -hmm. you guys stop um, understanding and knowing one another. Basically, you start to build your lives this way. Right. And so instead of them coming together and staying together, you start to go off and build your life and do your thing. He or she starts to go off and build their life that way. And next thing you know it, five, six, seven years down the road, you're like, who am I with? <laughs> Why am I here? What am I doing here? And so, so let me ask you this. Sure, 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 sure. Where were you in that space of that time? Were you still in a place of um why or were you like okay good i'm there too do you feel like you were in a different place than where you were <laughs> you know what for me i was like well i actually was a why person because from my mm -hmm. mind and my standpoint i was going to get married one time and stay married that time mm -hmm. and so when the towel got thrown in on me, it was basically like I had no choice but to follow suit because you can't be in a marriage by yourself. Right. <laughs> so when your partner comes to you and literally says to you that he no longer wants this SHI to fill in the last letter any longer, then what was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to stand there and beg, cry and all that stuff? No, you made your choice. 
And so I have to honor your choice, whether I like the, whether I like what you're saying, whether I like to be in that spot. I had to put on my big girl panties and say, you know what? He no longer wants to be in this relationship. He no longer wants to be in this marriage. It does not matter how much I try to force feed him. He doesn't want it anymore. And so I had to deal with that. But, but I totally was like, what I mean, was it that bad? <laughs> was it really that bad that you had to say that you didn't want this ish no more? To me, it really wasn't. To me, I think that we could have worked on it, but it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And so that that's what that's what happened with me. But I was totally like, why? I, and that's that's a very good question, and I can appreciate that you brought that up of wanting to know why, because that why is going to carry into your future and your next relationship. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many people do not try to get to that why, and they just jump to the next one, never figuring out, so why did that one end? Not necessarily what did I do, because Mm -hmm. that's not the same thing as why did it end. Mm -hmm. What did Mm -hmm. I do? You didn't, you may have done nothing whatsoever, but you want to try to figure out, you know, was I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Did I not give enough attention? Did I give too much attention? Mm-hmm. Um, did I focus on myself more than like, so to be able to get back to the why, which is understanding yourself, yep. is a very important piece to, to moving forward to the anything. And that's relationship wise with friends, family, not just mm-hmm. another partner. Because yes. when it comes to this seven year itch, this is not just about a marriage or being with a, a opposite sex or in a, a same sex or being in a, a passionate relationship. This is all relationships because we see yes. friendships fall out around that mm-hmm. mark too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's huge wanting to get back to that why. Well, I have to say for me, I, I, I did figure out the why, which is why now which is why now I share this information and the content and put myself out here and share my story, letting people become a part of my world and what I was actually going through because it is so very important for you to figure out the why. And I had to take a step back to figure out what that why was. Part of the mm-hmm. why for my particular situation is because I, I could be a very clingy person. But I didn't realize that <laughs> I didn't realize that I was being clingy because I came from a large family. I was always around my family, always around my siblings, went to the military, always around people. And then it was me and my husband. So it was like we were supposed to be doing the same thing. <laughs> so I also didn't understand me time. I didn't understand mm-hmm. me time. So it was a lot of me doing more growing up and then understanding afterwards. But again, could those things been have been worked on while we were there? Of course they could have, but it didn't happen that way. And so right. I have to say And it that, takes two to want to work on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It takes two. But also I wouldn't be the person that I am if I would have stayed in that marriage as well. I probably wouldn't right. be the teacher that I am now and sharing this the tools and strategies with everybody else so they don't have to experience the same thing that I went through. And that's one of my goals. If I can help you not experience a divorce, because nobody gets married to get a divorce, right? right. So if I can help you, even, even if I can help you to say, you know what, I'm not going to marry this person because they are the wrong person and I don't want to be in a divorce later on, then I've actually done my job. I've actually yes. done my job. So that's exactly what I am out here doing. That's why I put myself out here because hey, it really is all about knowing. And then when you know the information, then you can actually use it in the correct way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. (laughs) So let's talk about the G spot. Does it really exist? And if it does, where is it actually at? How can men find it quickly? (laughs) It absolutely does exist. It is there. That part is not a myth. Um, and it was actually discovered by a man many, many, many years ago. Um, and his name, the G spot, cause his name after him, um, it's a German name. I will butcher it. So I will not try to say it here, okay. Okay. but it is essentially, if you, if you go to your navel and you come down about two inches, there is a spot that's right there and it's towards the front of the body. So it's just like a little mm-hmm. belly button, but on the inside. And actually, mm-hmm. if you want to find it, and I have these two fingers up to get started with it, 
So after you cut your nails, make sure they're nice and clean. You want to yes. <laughs> clean. <laughs> you, you insert those, uh, the two fingers there. And so you're going up a little bit, you know, about two inches in. If you start to feel to the left and to the right of it, you'll feel that the, the area to the left and the right and actually around it, it feels different. There's a spongy spot. And that's your G spot is actually spongy spot. That's the G spot. And so if you've ever watched, um, you know, a, a, a porn, you see there's women that's just kind of going crazy and going crazy. You don't need to do that. <laughs> that's an over dramatization of it. But what they're doing is they're just massaging that G spot area. Um, and it's, some people may call it milking. So if you gently press on that, but because of the angle and the reason why many women will Sometimes they'll never find their G-spot, and it's perfectly okay if you never find it. If you want it to stay a mystery, it is your business. Um, and there are some women who their partner would never find it because there's a, a angle for, um, for you to be in for your partner to actually get there. So okay. many times it's easier to find doggy style. And that's why some people genuinely enjoy that because they actually can get to it at that angle. Um, we actually, in the line of bedroom candy, we have a wedge pillow that you can get that positions you just ever so perfectly on an angle mm -hmm. that allows that perfect penetration um, to be hitting, to hit that spot. And with that G spot comes the whole thing of squirting. Okay. You know, sometimes... Um, some women who you ever, it, some women may get to the point where they end up at different parties and I talk to different clients and they say, oh my gosh, it feels like I'm about to pee on myself. So they stop. It's like, mm -hmm. actually, if you want to ever ex experience squirting, the first thing you want to do is completely empty your bladder because it's not pee. Um, it's truly a woman's um, orgasm. And that is her fluids. That is not pee whatsoever coming out of there. And with a, a completely empty bladder, if you are stroking that spot and you feel like you're about to urinate, that's, you'll eventually, you'll be squirting. Oh, huh. Interesting. Interesting. And so how, how often, how often or how long do they have to like massage that area before you start to squirt? Oh, it is totally woman to woman. There are some okay. people that can take one button and say, whoo, and they, whoo, and then there's... <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some that are just less sensitive. Um, it, it, everybody is totally different. Okay. And to be honest, um, foreplay is a huge thing. If your mind has already been oiled up and worked up and you're just, you know, mentally you're there and then you hit that right spot, you can go in 0 0.2 seconds. But okay. if you have that relationship where it, nothing's primed, there's no starting the engine before you go running the car and you just jump in there, it may take you a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I will say, I, I, I am a firm believer in saying this. It is very important for me to tell every single one of my clients, as a woman, go and find your G-spot for yourself first. Your first exploratory moment um, with your G-spot should be yours so that you know where it is so that you can instruct your partner on where to go and how to get there. Because no one can satisfy you better than you, believe it or not. But but what if I'm shy and I don't want to touch myself because I've been told it's nasty or, or I'm dirty? So then how do I find it? You wash your hands and you <laughs> look at yourself in the mirror and you, and you tell yourself that this is not a bad thing. You know, God gave us arms and long enough to reach all of our areas. And if he didn't want us to, we all have little T-Rex arms just like this. And so you just, um, and that's those things that you have to remember. Just become comfortable with yourself. Okay. If you can allow another person to enter your body and touch your body, mm -hmm. then you have to um, learn how to be comfortable, which, you know, sexuality coaching comes into play with that. You have to learn to be comfortable touching yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, 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 speaking about sexuality coaching, um, 
how would I know that I would need to come and see someone like you? Like, what are they like symptoms that I'm having? Or like, how would I know that I need to go and see a sexuality coach? Um, not necessarily symptoms, but if you, uh, what they say, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. If you keep running into the same wall and you are taking the advice of your good girlfriends and it is okay. getting you in the, in the exact same place or you are just, you just don't know. You don't understand. You're trying to figure it out. Why do I hate me? Why don't I love me? Why don't, you know, the, why do my partners always leave me? If you're in that why stage, so not necessarily a symptom, but you just need some guidance. Um, the saying that I, I like to say to people is, you know, on the football field of life, we all know how to play, but it's the coach that gives you the strategic plays to win the game. So Love we it. all know what we're doing in our lives, but sometimes you just need that extra guidance to get you to the goals um, that you've set for yourself and, and get those accomplished. And it can take, you know, three sessions. It could take up to 12 sessions. It could be intermittent okay. sessions. It's It varies greatly because somebody may come in with a very specific goal. Okay. But once we actually talk through that, the words, there's five levels of layers down below that they didn't even realize existed. Mm -hmm. That once we get to those five layers down there, that initial goal is never, it's not even a problem. But say, say, say that ending part again. That once we get to those, those five level deep layer pieces, mm -hmm. by the time we get to the actual goal that they came in with, that's, that's not even a problem at that point. Oh, I see. I see. So they just need because to Because a lot of times... Piece. Right. Okay. You know, um, definitely need to go. So let me, let me, let me ask you something. So okay, sure. I know you said that <laughs> you are now in a, you are now married. So before you got into this marriage, okay. what tips would you have given your dating self? Like what online mutual friends, blind dates, what, would you, what advice would you give to that person that is now ready to, to do this again? What dating advice would you give? Uh, you know what? Be Really be confident in yourself. Totally have gotten rid of or at least working through your baggage, meaning you at least know what your baggage is. You know what your triggers are, what, what uh, keeps you up at night, what makes you sad, what makes you happy, what makes you angry be able to articulate those things, be able to use the power of no. Don't worry about being a people pleaser. Uh, go after, literally after what you want. And then on top of that, knowing what you want, you have to, I actually tell my clients or I at least advise them to create a deal breakers list. And you want to create a deal breakers list because it is going to help guide you when the next guy or the next girl comes to you and only thing you see is the physical which is attracting you to them it's going to guide you and keep you on point to say you know what he or she doesn't meet this one this one or this one it's okay i'm able to move on or say you know what i can actually deal with it <laughs> right but you're at, le at least making a conscious decision to say mm -hmm. they can fit into your world. This is how they can actually fit into your world. And um, I'm not going into it blindsided or going into it fitting uh, their plan per se. I know who I am. I'm able to articulate what I need. I'm able to say, you know what? I did have some baggage or I do have some baggage. I'm working through that baggage. I'm working mm -hmm. with a coach, a relationship strategist, me. <laughs> uh, or a sexologist, whatever, right? But you know what your baggage is. You're working through it. You're you're um, able to say, you know what? He's not meeting these, and I'm no longer going to waste my time. But you also do not want to be so strict 
on your deal breakers list that now you're getting rid of this one, you're getting rid of that one. So say for instance, you have 10 things on your list, they meet 80% of them, but you're like, these other two, these other two, I don't know, I don't know. Just remember, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get 100%. It might, at least needs to be 80. 75 to 80%, mm -hmm. it needs to be at least from your deal breakers list. But if they are not meeting 20% of your list, that is absolutely, uh, um, it's, it's usual. So they have the 80-20 rule. They have the 80-20 rule for a reason. Because usually you're not going to get 100% what you're looking for in your spouse. You're going to get at least 80%. The other 20% is something that you will be lacking or feeling like, okay, I missed out on this, but I can still have a beautiful relationship. We can still have a beautiful family, be able to communicate in such a beautiful manner where we're creating this happy, go lucky, lovely life together because we are able to meet each other's needs for the most part. And then that other 20%, right. depending on what it is, don't quote me on it, that other 20%, <laughs> maybe it's, you know, you, you have to go get it from somebody else, but I don't want to go too deep on there. Again, it really depends for the 20% and I'll just leave it at that. But what about you? What, what do you think? So I agree with a lot of the things that you said, um, because you don't want to, you don't want to give up too much, but at some point you do have to not necessarily compromise in a, a way that um, takes away from who you are and what you believe in. But I feel like, you know, um, something you mentioned a little bit earlier of, you know, what if I don't want to touch myself because somebody, you know, growing up, you were told that it was nasty. Mm -hmm. There are some things that we were taught and that we picked up on along the way and we made them our expectations of a partner mm -hmm. when it was actually someone else's expectations of a partner and what we saw on the surface in someone else's relationship. So we want to make sure that when we set our standards, they're our standards mm -hmm. um, without compromising who we are. But I would say in the dating world today, have fun. You know, yeah. just be okay with telling, be honest, that'll be the first thing. If you are <laughs> dating more than one person, please let them know. Hey, Kaylina. <laughs> um, you want to let them know that you are. Because the first part to any perfect, even though it's not a perfect relationship, but any good relationship <laughs> is transparency and honesty. Mm -hmm. And if you're going into this dating, not telling the truth, any long-term thing that you have moving forward, you're going to always have that in the back of your mind. Because you don't know where these, uh, you don't know where it's coming from. So you want to just always. I just got a question and I'm going to get it and I'm going to okay. read it to you soon as she gives it to me. And I'll let you guys know. Um, but again, what I was saying is, and I, and I do apologize for that. Sometimes I can't do two things at once. <laughs> um, but you always, and so I think about, and kind of tying this back to the seven year itch. Mm -hmm. So when you're dating somebody, you just met them, you guys are, you know, three weeks in. In your mind, you may or may not see that you're going to be with them long term. So, you know, come to find right. out, you end up staying together. But during that first three weeks, I won't. During that first three weeks, um, you kind of had another person on the side, right? Okay. Because you were dating at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. So then you guys become super serious. And here it is a year later, and now you two have made this a commitment with just you two. Okay. So you walked into this relationship with an, a half truth. So do I say it now? Or do I just keep it to myself because we were only dating, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so you don't say anything. So here we go. We're four, five years down the line. We've gotten married. You walked into the marriage with a half-truth. Mm. So some of this 
found this is your foundation. You mm-hmm. built the foundation of a relationship with a half truth. Mm-hmm. And I say that to go back to the seven year myth because sometimes it's our foundation that's rocky that gets us to that seven year itch point. And we don't know what to do because there were some things that we didn't talk about in the very beginning that we mm-hmm. should have gotten out of the way that are showing up later. Mm-hmm. And because you don't know how to talk about it because you didn't do it way back when, it just turns into resentment someone's nagging so it it appears to be nagging um it can be you know hatred um hatred for yourself because i'm a liar i lied to this person oh my god i'm no good Mm -hmm. who am i to ever judge this person because i did this wrong thing so that seven year itch doesn't always have to do with at that seven year mark it could have been a build-up yeah yeah and it's all about that foundation well, be, Kanye, before you read your question, I have one more thing to add as far as what I would tell myself during the day. I would tell myself, and actually I want to share this with everybody else who is still out there dating, to enjoy the process as much as possible. I know that you mentioned have fun, but specifically to enjoy the process because so many of us, we want the product, i.e. the relationship or the marriage. We want the product, but you don't want to take the time to go through the process of getting to know who you're actually going to be in the bed next to for the long haul. And then another Mm -hmm. reason why the seven year itch comes into play because you, you, you guys stop communicating and you never really, you, you move too fast. You move too fast to get into this relationship. So you can say that you're in a relationship. So you can say that you're in a marriage and now you're like, who am I actually in this relationship? Who am I actually in this marriage with? So enjoy the process slow down and really take it one date at a time, one date at a time. And this one specifically, specifically for the ladies out there, because a lot of times when we get on these one, two, three dates, we, we got the dress picked out. We like, we, you got the kids names, (laughs) y'all going ham and y'all only on date three, (laughs) slow it down. So you can truly see the person that's in front of you. So you can recognize some of the red flags. And all of the things that seem cute to you right now, that's going to drive you nutty later on. So slow it down. Enjoy the process. Ask a million and one questions. Not all in the same night, but ask as many questions as possible. And just truly get to the core questions of what you cannot live without in your relationship. Because once you know what what the answer is, you can say, hey, no, he's not going to be for me. So like for me in particular, I actually want like one of my requirements um, was to make sure that I had a child or that we we were both open to the idea of having a child. Um, And so I wanted to make sure that I was qualifying those men, because if they didn't want to have a child or children, then they weren't for me. Now, obviously, with me being a Christian and everything, it was not really my choice. At least that's what I believe is God's choice. However if there is no possibility for us to try to procreate and like you it's completely off the table for you, then you weren't for me. So know what your absolute deal breakers are like the ones where you're like, I'm walking away. For me, it was having a child. For me, it was being a Christian. For me, it was, I don't, I didn't want a guy that traveled so much. Like you got a job Mm -hmm. that's taking you from here and there. I needed my, some of the things that I'm just not willing to say no about. I need you here with me, in the bed with me, next to me. That's, and again, these are my requirements. So think about what your specific deal breakers are. Write that deal breakers list. Use it as a guide, but at least stick to it. So that way, when that fine guy come by, when that sexy woman with that, that body like that come by, but she ain't right. got nothing up here, nothing going on, nothing on your deal breakers list. That way you were able to move her fine butt out the way, move his fine butt out the way, and move on and be open to really attracting the girl that's truly for you. But enjoy the process. Absolutely. Uh, so I have a question. Um, uh how do you deal with the spouse um, just not wanting to be intimate, intimate anymore? Um, you know, both are young, you know, 
one of the two have stepped outside of the marriage okay. um, and the other one has been completely, you know, solid, no stepping out of the marriage. And they're at that seven year mark. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that infidelity and especially depending on when that infidelity <laughs> happens until that infidelity is uh, dealt with head on that is going to live and fester in every crevice of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I, I've been in that place and you have some choices to make. You either forgive and you move on or you choose not to forgive and you don't move on, but you can't do both. You can't say I forgive and every so often it's brought up to continue to brew and fester because right. you haven't gotten over that. So right. if you're choosing to say, I, I, I forgive, you need to also choose to seek the guidance and help to help you to get over it because it doesn't just go away. Just saying I forgive doesn't make it go away. Um, that's the very first step in your healing. And then you have to understand that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. People who cheat or who step outside of their marriage, they have their own self-identifying items going on. And it has nothing to do with their partner. Right. You could be Susie Q homemaker with the best collard greens, body banging like, hey, Beyonce got cheated on. You know? Yeah. It yeah. is what it is. That is something inside of that person that they need to go over here and seek guidance and to find out why. But I will tell you this, the person that cheated, that doesn't go away off of their conscience. So I will always say, and I've seen, you know, somebody cheats, I'm going to cheat back. That's not the answer. No. If someone cheats, you continue to stay firm to who you are because the basis should be you don't cheat because you love yourself. It has nothing to do with the other person. Right, right. So continue to stay absolutely welcome. You continue to stay faithful to yourself because your commitment is to you first, mm -hmm. not to the other party. And I believe it's when we give ourselves away and we commit to someone else before ourselves, that's when that gap happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is absolutely nothing that you did wrong in that situation in the by way of someone else cheating. Right. But there may be items now that can be done to repair within yourself. Mm -hmm. But again, you have two choices. You forgive and you move on, which involves seeking guidance, or you choose not to forgive, and you move over there the other way. But do not be inside of that marriage doing both. Yeah. And I think it's perfect that you said we're at that seven-year mark, because as our minds are maturing, um, we're not comfortable talking to each other. Mm -hmm. We're not comfortable having those difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will it will shake your self confidence to the core, because the first thing you think is there must be something wrong with me because that person cheated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you because if something was wrong with you, then you all wouldn't have connected on the front end. There was something about you that was awesome, that was great, that was, you know what? They made the choice to make that commitment to you, yeah. but there was something in in them that they needed to heal that maybe you weren't able to heal for them. And it's okay. It's perfectly okay. You didn't go to a, a school or class to learn how to heal that other person. And a lot of times it's not your job to heal that other person. It's, their, it's your duty to be there to support and guide. But that support could be, hey, let's go down and see this relationship strategist. Well, let's go down and see this uh, sexuality coach because you need help. I need help individually. And then eventually we can bring it back together. But can a marriage survive infidelity? Absolutely, it can. What would be your take on that? 
You know what? I, I, I actually, I believe, I believe that what you're saying is absolutely true. Um, I definitely believe that a relationship can survive infidelity, but it definitely takes both parties um, to be in it and willing to go through and learn what the breakdown was, why the actual infidelity happened. Because a lot of times it really does, I hate to keep beating a, beating a dead horse, but it really is about the communication for certain. Um, it's, it's about opening up and just sharing and just really being vulnerable because in that seven years, you guys were still um, going through a journey and you were going through an individual journey while you were also in the relationship. And then you're learning all of these new things. You're, you're being exposed to all of these different people and, and relationships and you're learning about just different things altogether. And so with that being said, a lot of times we run away from talking about these sensitive things with our partner, which is, again, the tough conversations. You just have to have those tough conversations no matter what, no matter how uncomfortable you are, no matter uh, how much you hate to talk about or despise them bringing up said topic. Because as I find my clients, specifically the male clients, um, they tell me and they open up to me a lot about one of the reasons why they cheat is because not only have they asked their wife or significant other to try said position, they keep getting shut down. They know they don't want to even think about trying it or they saying that it's nasty. And I'm not saying that they should be treat cheating. That's not where I'm going with that. But what I am saying is when you're not open to the idea of hearing what your spouse has to say, at least having the conversation and not shutting, not shutting him or her down and not just making them the nastiest person out there, guess what? They're going to seek um, solace in somebody else and comfort in somebody else that's making them feel good, that's making them feel like, okay, to actually talk about. I'm not dirty. I'm not nasty. I'm not, you know, whatever, whatever words you want to insert there. So you have to be open to every conversation, no matter how nervous, no matter how um, crazy you think that the conversation actually is. No matter what, yes. And Wale says, have the big conversations no matter what. Absolutely, you have to. That is the only way your relationship is going to survive for the long haul. It doesn't matter how much you hate the conversation. If you're a person yes. that um, doesn't like threesomes, but your spouse is interested in threesomes, at least having the conversation, have the conversation. Because seriously, the conversation is not going to go away. It might go away with you, but the conversation is <laughs> going to be stuck up here because you are not dealing with what they want to talk about. They can't be completely yes. open. They can't be completely out there and free with you. So create that safe space for them to be open and free with you. So it, I'm not saying that it's going to stop cheating, but it absolutely will cut down on cheating when you open up this and just have the space for your partner to be able to express themselves where they don't feel dirty or nasty. But um, before I move on, I did want to address the part where you mentioned about... Um, Forgiveness, forgiving your spouse, because forgiveness is really not for your spouse or your partner or whomever it is. Your the yes. forgiveness is for yourself. The forgiveness is so you're able to stop being so tense and in this tight mo mode where you're walking around and every, you're holding everything in. The forgiveness is for yourself, for you to be free so that your partner, whomever it is, no longer has that stronghold over you and really over your mind because it really is, it goes back to who and what story you're telling yourself about yourself the entire time. So forgive, forgive yourself, forgive your partner, but forgiveness has nothing to do with your partner. It really doesn't. Forgiveness... Right is a way for you to release that weight that you're carrying around. Just get rid of it. I know it's easier said than done, but you must do it in order to get uh, get rid of that stuff, but also to move forward in your life. Because the more you hold Absolutely. on to it, you will never be able to release that stuff if you don't forgive yourself and forgive the other person, whether they tell you, I'm sorry, whether you ever hear it, even if you guys get a divorce or break up, still forgive them. Because you're the only person that's walking around with all of this hatred in your heart. Now you got to dog out every other person that comes after the person. Because you're going to show everybody. Nobody going to get you like that no more. 
it's, it's really not. It's, right. I, did, I did all of that because that's what we do. Ain't nobody going to get me like that no more. Like, it's, it's really not that serious. We're making it more serious than it is. You just have to forgive the other person, really, no matter what. It's just like having those tough conversations, no matter what. You just got to do it. Got to do it. Because, and, not, and none of us are perfect anyway. We are trying to be in perfect relationships with perfect people when we're not perfect ourselves, right? So we have to just get over the fact that we're not perfect. We're, we're, people are going to mess up what you deem as a deal breaker mess up or it's just a huh, mess up. It's up to you. Right. It's different for everybody. <laughs> But forgive them. But um, you know what, um, <laughs> we, we actually have time for at least one or two more questions. But I did get a question while you were talking, Kanye, and I want to um, ask you this, which is, what do you think about open relationships, whether the people are married or just in a relationship? And can they survive the long haul? I feel as though... If it is a relationship where there has been a completely open and transparent conversation, okay. then they absolutely can. But both parties have to be in agreement. There have to be actual ground rules set and rules that will be stuck to. That's just like, um, you know, adding a third, you know, threesomes, all that stuff. So it does come with boundaries and rules yes. to just say, oh, we're going to be in an open relationship. You do what you want to do. I do what I want to do without having rules. That's never going to work. And they need to be either written. They need to be written down. There need to be something where you can reference back to it. Because what happens is we create rules in our mind. And what I feel like an open relationship is may not be what my partner feels like an open relationship is. So I may feel like, oh, we're in an open relationship. I can bring somebody to the house. Mm -hmm. Where, for my partner, my mm -hmm. partner is saying, well, if this is our home. You shouldn't bring anyone into our home. But mm -hmm. that rule wasn't set. So mm -hmm. that's where the discord comes in. It's because those conversations weren't happening on the front end. Yes. Can they survive? They absolutely can. That is not for me in my marriage, but I know or relationship, but I know that it it can be survived. It can be survived. But mm -hmm. there has to be conversations. And not just one. You may have to revisit that yeah. every so often. It may yeah. be five years where, you know, you guys have matured and you feel a little bit different. Let's okay, let's revisit this. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen um it was a couple who, you know, they did an open relationship. The rule was she could never be with a man. Okay. She could be with women. She mm -hmm. agreed to it. He could be with women. And then after a while, they had children. And so they said, all right, let's go ahead and stop having this open relationship. Okay. Now, I can't say how they actually feel because if ground rules were never set and rules or if rules were set and they were broken, then there's never going to be that trust again. Okay. So ground rules need to be set. It absolutely can survive. Um, but you have to have those transparent conversations. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, well, that I'll have to say that's what I'm finding as well. The people that I know have survived and are in open relationships, that's exactly what they talk about. They talk about the never-ending conversations, again, the tough conversations, the boundaries conversations, uh, the, the one couple that I was talking to had basically thought that they were on the same page and they found out that they weren't. Um, they, they would choose a, a spouse for the wife to go and be in a relationship with. The husband met the, met the other guy and everything. And he ended up having a jealousy issue because when he was out of town, she said that she was going to hang out with them and their rule was, you know, if you're out of town, then I can actually sleep over. Um, but, but in any event, I'm sorry that she could not sleep over when he's out of town. And for some reason she slept over there. So boundaries were broken basically. Mm -hmm. And they end up ending it with that particular guy, but it was a whole, you know, because, because you're out of town. I mean, you're not here anyway. And that's kind of what she was saying. Well, you're not here anyway, but she broke the rules. So she broke a rule. Um, yeah, yeah. So so that's mainly what it's about. That's what I keep hearing. Again, it's not for me either, but that's what I keep hearing for those who are making it work. Communication, communication, communication. Anytime they have a conversation, 
if one beetles the other person, you got to get rid of the other person. If, you know, whatever it is that don't rub the person right with this uh, additional party coming in, then you have to get rid of them. Otherwise, you two's relationship is going to have an actual breakdown in it for sure. But um, you know what? We actually got to wrap this up, Kanye. Yep. <laughs> I think we need, to have, we need to have a part two because our hour has come. Yeah. <laughs> it's come faster than we thought. And uh, this yeah. has been a very juicy conversation. So let us know if you guys want us to do a part two in um, the next week or so, next two weeks, something like that, because I feel like we are just hitting the surface of this conversation. And I feel like a lot more people have something to say. If you guys have questions, send them in to either me to Kanye. We will make sure that we do at least another part two where we can go ahead and answer your questions. Do you, um, wait, if I were to do an open marriage, I don't ask, don't tell. Okay. Okay. We have, we, we're not going to be able to address that because we're actually at our hour right now. But again, if you have any more questions, send them to me or Kanye. We would definitely get back on here and do another Facebook live so we can address all of your questions. Um, before we go, do you want to tell them where they can find you? And then I'll come back and tell them where they can find me. Absolutely. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, we definitely have to wrap it up and I, I can see us definitely doing a part two. Um, I am available. I, I am accepting new clients um, right now. You can always contact me. My phone number is 804-967-4551. You can send me an email at info, I-N-F-O, at loveandintimacy101.com. And you can also visit my website, which has all of my services, both personal and business coaching. And that is loveandintimacy101.com. L-O-V-E-A-N-D-I-N-T-I-M-A-C-Y-101.com. <laughs> Thank yes, you all. Buddy. <laughs> all right. And then you guys know my name, Marshawn Olanio. And so you can find me at marshawnolanio.com or you can send me an email at marshawn at marshawnolanio.com. Or you can just send me a message on Facebook Messenger as well. I am also open and accepting clients. And we can talk about how we can work together if you need some help get your relationship back on track. Again, check out Amazon and go ahead and purchase my book because I would love that, which is Reignite Your Relationship by 7X. Again, it is in paperback and as well as ebook format. So again, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for your questions. We will do this once again, and uh, we will talk with you very soon. All right? Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>